Hey everyone, it's Amanda with Red F Designs, and we're back for another kiln opening. Um, this one's number 10, so that's a fun milestone. Um, I just did one last week, actually, and I actually have almost enough for another one. Um, I always have more stuff than I think. I think, oh, I'm going to wait till I get, you know, you know, X amount before I um, do the actual kiln firing, but I... I should just do it because there's always so much stuff. So, okay, let's get started. Um, this one is a kind of Christmassy one. Um, this one is a plate that I made on um, like an MDF mold. Um, I can't remember the name of the place, but it was on Etsy. I'll put it in the comments section where I got the mold from. Um, it's just a drape mold, so you make a slab, drape it over, um, and before I did that I textured the slab with some cedar branches that fell down in my yard, and um, then I bisked it, and then filled the lines with copper wash, Mako's copper wash. You can see better, it's not a glare. Um, and then kind of wiped it back just so that it was just in the recessions. And then I put two coats of Mako Celadon Bloom over the top. And I think it looks kind of like snow. It's really cute. And the copper wash went green instead of black, which it does sometimes. Um, I think it depends, you know, on the glaze that you use. I'm not sure which ones work, but... Celadon Bloom. It definitely goes green. And then I did kind of like some snow around the edge just because this white clay, this is Georgie's G-Mix. Um, it does fire slightly bit yellow, you know, compared to regular white. And <clears throat> I don't know, it's kind of a lot of crystals. I kind of knew that when I was putting it on. Um, but maybe I'll get some of that base glaze to just... If you do a coat of the base glaze first and then a coat of the crystals, then you get kind of more spaced out ones, but that one's really cool. I like it a lot. This is all the flat stuff. This one is reactive red on brown clay. Um, it's part of a set that's going to come out later. Okay, this is a, um, a cast item, slip cast. It's a tea bag holder in the shape of a teapot, and it's got Snapdragon on the back and Weeping Plum on the front covering that uh, transfer um, that we have there. Um, that was a transfer that I got from a store in Etsy, this Japan Crafts. So I'll put the link in the description. Here's another one. I made a video of myself um, making these, but I don't know, it still needs to be edited. So this one is Peacock, I think, um, on the back. And then I'm trying out this HF9 Amico Zinc Free Clear. Um, so that's that. Two coats of that, and it's a really nice finish. Um, this ended up being a cone 5 firing. Um, because I'm finding that most glazes work better at cone 5. Um, you know, maybe some, like the metallics, or maybe ones you want to get real drippy. Um, you can go up to cone 6, but I don't know, cone 5 has been pretty good so far. I'm not totally sure on this one. If, if I'm wrong, I'll put it up in the corner here. Uh, this is kimchi, Spectrum Kimchi. One coat only on um, the white G-Mix. All the slip cast items are also um, Georgie's G-Mix. This one is Spectrum Citron Chino. Um, really pretty. On another piece I did it on, I got a lot of bubbling in the holes. I mean, in the, in the thick part, um, bubble holes. But there's a few in there you can kind of see, but they're really small. Um, so you can't do this one too thick is the model on that one. And these are all um, 
Oregon ornaments that I've done, the state of Oregon, where I live. Um, it's a cookie cutter. I textured the slab first and then cut it out and then made my own little loop on an iChrome wire and I'm just firing them flat. Um, I know it's kind of over for ornament season now, but I'm going to be ready for next year. So, <clears throat> And then they're all in sort of Oregon themes. Oregon's like the Rose State, so that's what those other ones were. Now this is the crab crabs, and this is one coat of cinnabar, Mako cinnabar, because um, people at the beach really like crabs and crabbing. Um, here's another cedar one. This one is vert luster. Really pretty. And this one is, oh, those are all on white clay. Now this one's on brown clay. And this is um, Emerald Falls. Breaks so nicely on the brown clay. I love it. This one is a, a, a Douglas fir. And the other one was a cedar. So, let's see. The cone pack here. I ended up doing, my middle shelf got real crowded. So I ended up doing just on the top and the bottom. Which I don't usually do on the top. So... This is telling me that it didn't quite reach a cone five on the top. Here's six and seven. And the shelves are gonna be a little tiny bit wobbly. Um, this is another uh, slab built plate I made on a drape mold. Um, again, one of these MDF ones. Um, it was a Canadian company. So I'm, check the, check the description. Um, and that is Spectrum Sangria. I guess I almost put it on too thick for a, for a horizontal surface. Next time I would do a little thinner. Um, you really get the float there on a, on a flat surface. And here's the edge. It's like a rectangle plate, kind of warped a tiny bit, but it was uh, my first one on this mold, so I kind of uh, maybe moved it too much when I was making it. <clears throat> okay, let's get these shelves over here. I really had to balance all this stuff. It was hard having several levels. And okay, um, yes, let's take a look at this. So here's the tiny teacup of reactive red that came out so good. Um, just two coats and it goes on this tiny little saucer. Um, this one I didn't make, my neighbor made it for her daughter, so it's super cute. And, okay, let's see here. Got this bowl. Um, I've been making, hand-making bowls um, out of a slab. This one is brown clay and emerald falls. Um, I got this plaster mold that looks like, it's like a hump mold, so it just looks like that shape without the foot and um, I've been making uh, stamped slabs and then draping them over the plaster mold and then cutting them to a bowl and putting a foot on the bottom. This one has a round foot. Um, I just experimented with a few different foot designs so you'll see those later. Um, and it's like filled in the texture enough to just, you know, use it normally. Um, I like texture inside a bowl. I feel like a lot of bowl design is done on the outside and you're not really looking at that part while you're eating out of it. But some people just like texture design in the bowl. Wow, that just was just not touching the shelf. Okay. This is cinnabar, also on a stamped texture. You can see 
it's a few different stamps. These are like um, carved wooden block print stamps from India. And I just kind of picked a couple different ones and combined them. And then on the back is Ancient Copper, which has gone a really coppery. Of course, no texture, so there's no really where for it to break except the light brush strokes. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, a lot of people say it has to go to cone 6, but that's to get those little um, spot dot crystal things that happen sometimes. <clears throat> Okay, this guy is a planter, it's just kind of a, this is a, um, a bisque roller that I made by carving it and then used it to texture this clay and then um, made this hand built planter out of it. Inside that's Aurora Green and Dark Flux. I like that combo on the white clay, but I don't know, I'm not so sure about it on the brown clay. It's very gray, very gray, almost blue. Um, and on the outside, that is Rutile Wash, which I really just love, um, just by itself, because it's a very barky color, wood color, especially looks good on texture. I think I did wipe this back, like not not wipe it back, but just wipe off the highlights. Um, so that one's pretty. <clears throat> okay, here's a few more. A few more ornaments. I put ornaments all along the bottom of the bowls. Bowls take up a lot of room in there. Uh, this is pink opal. Mako. <clears throat> when it gets thick, it is almost a, I don't know, kind of almost purpley color. Um, that kind of darky, dark pink. This one um, might be, let's see. I'm not sure about this one. It's either jade or bottle green. Um, I'll pop it up in the right hand corner though. And this one is Spectrum Lagoon. It's a really cool like beachy kind of vibe because it's so, it breaks um, like this yellow green color. But then the thick parts are like a very nice turquoise blue. Um, again, assorted stamps. These are some just different ones I've gotten around. Um, I have a good wooden stamp collection. Okay, this one is a little cast. A little casting. Um, this guy's a buffalo. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, um, so I love it there. Um, and the animal is a buffalo, you know, the theme. Um, so this is three different glazes. It's wrought iron kind of on, on his body here and face. And then it's Mako root beer um, on the shaggy hair part, which has broken really really nicely. I, I really like that. It's almost like the iron luster oatmeal combo or something. That's just one glaze. Um, and then I did the hooves and the horns in Mako's new brown gloss. So super cute though. <laughs> it's just one of those molds. I, I try to get mostly functional molds and not um, little cutesy ones, but sometimes I can't can't help myself. Okay, so what is this? This is a pillow vase. It's a it's a cast mold. Um, slip cast. It got a little. This one I've been working on for a long time. It it kind of got dinged up a little bit um, and wiped a little too much. Um, but it's like a sunset. 
Um, I used a stencil to spray some clouds on there. This underglaze has gone all has gone all bumpy on me. I don't know what's happened there. Maybe it was too thick or I don't know. Anyway, and then inside is really pretty. Um, I thought it would go with the purple. It's blue oyster, which I think is a Shino, a Spectrum, Spectrum blue oyster. And it's not on texture, but it's a very nice bluey purple color. That one also had HF9 on it. I put it on this piece too. And then later I was reading, though, that maybe you should use uh, one with zinc for items using red and yellow underglaze. I don't know. It looks pretty good, though. Um, so this is a jar, and the top of it is on the next level down. I think maybe that's oatmeal on the inside. It's hard to see. That's what I have written down, but I don't know if it's really true. Um, so this is a Frost's Bolete, and it's going to have a big mushroom top, jar top on it. And I, um, to make this, I hand built it, and then I um, slip trailed all of these raised lines, and then um, when it was bisked, then I painted it with the underglaze, and then did a coat of the HF9, just one coat. I didn't want it to get thick, like, uh, this is such a highly textured surface. I didn't want it to get thick in, uh, the cracks, and it has a tiny bit, like you can see maybe right there, where it's pooled, um, but still looks really good. Um, that purple one's been waiting to get fired for a long time, so... There's another bowl. Ooh, the texture of that one didn't come through quite as much as I wanted it to. Um, this is kimchi, Spectrum kimchi on uh, white clay, the G-Mix. I only did two coats, but I guess I should have only done one coat or made the texture deeper. Here's some, this is maybe the deepest texture. You can still see that it was like roses. Um, can you see that? I don't even know if you can see it. There you go, kind of. Anyway, and then outside of that is rose quartz, which is the new Mako glaze. Um, yeah, it's pretty. It's slightly matte, you know, I knew it would be, um, but I thought it would go good with the kimchi. But now the kimchi has gone so blue, so floaty. Maybe it's a cone five thing. I don't know. And the other bowl. See, these these kiln openings are going to be a lot shorter if I'm doing bowls. I guess I really do pack it full, so that's got some kind of... I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just chunk. Okay, this one is Albany Slip Brown times two, and then Lustrous Jade, kind of like one really thick layer on top of that, and then Cactus, Spectrum Cactus on the outside. Let me see the foot on this one. It's kind of bigger than the foot on the other ones. Kind of testing out which one I like the best. Um, and this is that uh, roller that was on the planter, too, that I had made. Wood grain roller. I'm really into things faux wood grain and regular wood grain, too. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you know. 
Okay, let's see. We call this one. All right. Okay. So the bottom shelf did reach a full, full cone five. That's just about. Well, it's over a cone five, I suppose. And then the six has started to go a little bit, but not really. And then the seven's just regular untouched. So the bottom got to more than five and the top got to less than five. So I would imagine the middle is at five. Okay, now here's the top to that first one. Oh man, look at this. That is a cool jar. The uh, I used the HF9 on the top to red and uh, yellow Amico velvet underglazes. Look at the texture on that. That took me a long time. Um, and to get it to fit, it fits pretty perfect. Wow, it's big too. That thing's awesome. There's a couple of tests that I did just to see what they would look like. I've got this little mold. It's for, I don't know what you're really supposed to do with them, napkin holders or something? Like you're supposed to, or place card holders, you're supposed to cut, cut a slit down uh, between the two shells. And then there's enough to piece, put a piece of paper or cardboard. And this one is, it says on the bottom, white opal with pink opal over it. It's kind of a mottled effect. That's interesting. The opals, when combined together, especially with white, get that little mottled effect, which I like. And then this one's white opal with reactive red. Not a lot of room to write on the bottom, but they still work good like a test tile. And I only put it um, from here to here, like from that point of the shell to this point of the shell. And just to see how much it ran. Um, I've got a couple more of these coming. So yeah, white opal with reactive red over. Definitely ran, got thick down there at the bottom and bubbly. Um... This is another just a little test, test tile slash shot glass or something. Um, light flux on the top and snow on the bottom to keep it from running off. And then um, coral sands and aurora green. Um, and... What other one do I have? Of course I didn't write it down. I'm going to say it's reactive red because I'm pretty sure what that that's what that is. Um, just to see how flux reacts with these colors. Light flux. And a couple more ornaments. <clears throat> Here's another Emerald Falls one. I knew that would work really good, so I made two of them. And then this one is Cobalt Wash. Wiped back. And then um, Celadon Ice on top. This is barely, barely blue at all. Sometimes I use ice as like a cover coat, like a clear, because the mixing clear doesn't seem to work as good for me, but... Um, and here's one again with the copper wash down in the texture, and then it's um, wasabi over at Amico Wasabi. That's a good combo too. I almost did the plate that, and then I saw something with Celadon Bloom, and I thought it would be more more festive. Hmm, what is this? I don't know. Well, if 
If I find out, I'll let you know. But I thought it was coral gloss, and it might be still, but I forget what else. That's like a, an egg cup. That's a casting, too. And then the last item. Oh, yeah, that turned out so good. Look at this thing. It's the honeybee altar. You can hang it on your wall because it's got a hole. And it's got some holes up top for the heat of the candle to come out. You can put a candle right here or whatever, an offering. Um, we've got the bee stamps all up the side. And the bee stamp in the back and on the bottom. And then the honeybee texture all around. Wow, I love this thing. Um, yeah, super cool. Um, and this is Spectrum's Texture Leopard. Now, the first time I used this on the brown, I loved how it turned out, and I thought um, it, it went on pretty easy. And then this time, I felt like there were a lot of, maybe I stirred it more or something. Usually I shake up the glazes, but it seemed like there were a lot of little tiny crystals in there, which is what the texture is in the texture line on the, the Spectrum glazes. There's a lot of different texture ones. And they have these little tiny, little like clear crystals almost. Not big like the Mako crystals, but small. And I was worried that it was gonna run. So I wiped it back, but I was still worried. But it didn't run at all. It did kind of get this floatiness, which is maybe where the crystals are. Um, maybe I just put too much too much glaze on there. The outside seems, seems yellower than the inside somehow. I don't know. Anyway, wow. That's so awesome. So many cool ones to choose from in this load. Um, opening. I think either this one or the mushroom is probably my favorite. Um, so what do you guys think? Um, thanks for tuning in to my kiln opening, and uh, hopefully I'll be doing another one in the next week or so. So, okay, peace.